Begin with a regular size Coca-Cola can. Sand the edges using some fine grade sandpaper. After that, score the base with a razor blade. You can set the razor into a book binding so that you can have a better gauge of how high you want the razor blade. Once the razor blade has scored the bottom, you can make a quick puncture with a sharp tool and then follow the edge until the end and then remove the base. Now that you have the base removed, follow the same procedure by scoring the very inner edge of the bottom of the can. Find a sharp but strong tool to puncture the bottom and then remove the inner portion of the can. Repeat this procedure with the smaller soda can, again cutting along the base and puncturing the bottom and removing the inner portion. Now set the razor blade into the book binding at 2.5 centimeters from the base. Score the bottom and again cut along the edge until you remove the bottom portion. Now that you have both bottom sections cut, sand along the bottom edges to make it smoother transition when you combine the parts. Now remove your 3M fiberglass and mark a section, a square section, just around the edge of the can, about one inch overlap. Take your scissors and cut out the fiberglass you don't need to be too precise. For this next section you're going to require a grommet kit. Buy that at the local hardware store. Use the grommet kit to punch a hole into the fiberglass. Once you have your hole in the fiberglass, place the grommet inside and then hammer into place. Place the fiberglass piece with the grommet inside the outer can and then place the inner smaller can inside. Make a nice tight fit. Now get out your insulation and cut out a piece that is just larger than your can. Fit this piece down inside the edge between the two cans. An additional piece that I did not show is that I cut out an additional piece of fiberglass to put in just underneath the other layer of fiberglass. This creates a nice tight seal over the grommet so that alcohol cannot leak out if the can is knocked over. With all of your insulation installed into the can, now you can gently take another piece of a can and run it around the edges. This will make a nice tight fit. It takes a little bit of time and might take a few efforts, but once you get it all level, the can will fit together nice and snug. You don't need any kind of glue or JB Weld. The can will never come apart. Here you can see the can is nice and tight fitly together and you can look closely and you'll see the extra piece of fiberglass down inside the grommet. This is a piece that I put in there just to protect the alcohol from leaking out if it is knocked over. Now what you want to do is take some tape and run it around the edges of the can. This will be what you use to mark the holes. Mark the beginning of the strip of tape and then remove the tape from the can. With your tape removed, lay it down next to a measuring stick. Mark off the distance that you want for your holes. 
I have 16 holes in this stove, so I have a spacing of about 7 millimeters between each hole. Now reapply the tape to the can. This will be your guide for your holes. Transfer the marks from the tape onto your can using a Sharpie. Now using my Dremel with a 16th inch drill bit, I will follow around the edge of the can and drill out each individual hole. The angle that you drill the hole doesn't really matter, but if you want, you can try to create a little bit of an angle. You will notice I have tape on my thumb. This is to allow the blade to run smoothly across my thumb without cutting or burning my skin. With the insulation installed and the cans pushed together and all the holes drilled, now the stove is ready to be lit. For my first test, I'm using half an ounce of alcohol. You'll see that I'm using heat, the yellow bottle, much better for burning. With the timer running, you'll see that the can ignites to the outer edges very quickly, partially due to the alcohol that was spilled over, but the can over multiple tests lights up within about 13 to 15 seconds. With only half an ounce of alcohol, you'll get about three minutes of useful burn. In this video, I do not show a boiling test. However, during further testing, I was able to boil one cup of water in approximately two and a half minutes. This is a very hot burning stove. You'll see in this picture that they can't, even with the can tipped over, the alcohol does not pour out because of the insulation on the top. So there you have it. Here's my alcohol burning stove. If you have any questions, I know there are some details left out, so feel free to leave some comments down below. I'll be sure to reply. If you enjoyed, like the video and share with your friends. Also check out adamsventure.com to get further details.